Guys, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And thank you for all the great questions and suggestions. Hopefully I've been able to help out some of you guys. Keep sending them in and we'll all learn how to use the Tone Master Pro together. Now I've been getting a number of questions about how to go about recording with the Tone Master Pro as well as reamping. So we'll go over recording in this video and we'll go over reamping in the next one. Now I usually use Logic Pro for my DAW or Digital Audio Workstation, but it's Mac only, so that leaves the PC guys out. I don't have a PC, but I've got some questions about using Audacity, so why not give it a shot? I'm pretty sure that it's similar from platform to platform, except for not having to load the ASIO drivers on the Mac version. And the price is right, free! <laughs> So for you guys just getting into using your computer for recording, maybe Audacity is the way to go, right? Now I haven't used Audacity in quite a few years, so I was not aware that it could do multi-track recording. Now unfortunately, it doesn't do VST or AU plugins. That means I can't make one of my usual demos, but maybe we can still use it to record from the Tone Master Pro. Let's take a look. Well, I went ahead and installed Audacity, and when I booted it up, it looks pretty much the same as it used to in the past. It's a very easy interface. No problems with that. And when I used Audacity in the past, though, it was as an editor. I'd take a WAV file that I had recorded in Logic, and then I'd load that file into Audacity, and then I would do various editing to it, like fading out the end, for example. Now, in that capacity, Audacity works great, but guys, it fails miserably as a multi-track recorder. I spent a whole afternoon working with it, first figuring out how to turn on input monitoring. But then once that worked, the latency was horrible, and I mean completely <laughs> unusable. Now, if you're not sure that you know what latency is, it's the time that it takes for Audacity to process your input and send out a signal. Like, so for instance, you pick a string and the time it takes for that sound to come out the speaker. There is just no way that you could play and listen at the same time because it would throw you off. I rebooted my Mac Mini, you know, which is fairly powerful. And I had Audacity running as the only open app. It still had horrible latency. I switched over to USB, same thing. No matter what I did, Audacity was completely unusable. That was at least four hours wasted. So now we're back to square one. What are we going to try next? Well, how about if we try Reaper? It's another DAW that's supposed to be easy to use. It's supported on both platforms and it's free. Well, kind of. I downloaded and installed Reaper, which took a while, as I apparently had 170 VST3 and VST plugins to scan, and it didn't even inform me of scanning for AU plugins, and that's the format that's used in Logic Pro. Anyway, verifying certain plugins would cause Reaper to crash, but it started up again right away and kept on scanning. Eventually, the installation completed, and then I went through the preferences to set everything up. I'd say that the whole process took maybe uh, somewhere around 15 minutes. It'll probably be much quicker if you don't have many or any plugins on your computer. Now, technically, this is an evaluation version, and you have 60 days to evaluate it and then purchase it for 60 bucks if you plan on keeping it. However, it is my understanding that the developers never cripple the software. So if you're still shy of funds after the 60-day evaluation period, you can just keep on uh, evaluating it until you have the funds. But come on, guys. You'll know after two months if you plan to keep on using Reaper. So just do the right thing. Save up and fork over the bucks if it's worth it to you. Okay, so anyway, we're at the user interface. Reaper found all the devices connected to my Mac Mini and I was able to easily add a stereo track from my PreSonus 1810C interface. I guess no digital audio workstation, or DAW, starts a new track with input monitoring on, because I had to find that before I got any audio. But once I did, there was no latency, unlike Audacity. So that meant that we had a winner. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to assume that you have an audio interface and you know how to use it. 
If you haven't downloaded and installed Reaper, get that done first. I'll have the download link in the description. While it's installing, we're going to connect our Tone Master Pro to our audio interface using cables, preferably XLR cables. Connect the XLR left and right outs on the back of the Tone Master Pro to the XLR inputs 1 and 2 on your interface. If you don't have XLR cables, use two guitar cables to make the same connections. Then adjust the input levels on your interface to get a good signal. Okay, now guys, I can't show you how to use all of Reaper's functions in this video but there are lots of videos available that show you how to use it. I'll show you how to set it up for recording one stereo track using the Tone Master Pro with cables, and in the next video I'll show you how to record and reamp using USB. All right, at this point you have Reaper installed and set up and running. You have an empty user interface, except for the master section down in the lower left. Go to the top menu and select track. Click on insert new track, and a new track is added, but it's basically inactive and undefined at this point. If you hover your mouse over the red circle icon on that track, you see the text record arm slash disarm. Click this button and it turns bright red. Input monitoring is turned on and more options are shown. Right click on this button and you'll see a menu with input options. You'll want these options checked. Monitor input, record input, Input stereo using analog one and analog two. Now, if you start playing your guitar, you should hear it through the speakers now, and you should also be seeing the instrument meters light up when you play. The fader on the right with the red meter is for your guitar. The fader on the left with the green meter is the master volume. It's best just to leave this one alone. Otherwise, your recording can have digital distortion, which is really ugly. Now at this point you need to decide if you want to use the metronome when recording. If you do, click on the seventh icon on the top line in the upper left. That enables the metronome. You can change the timing of your project by clicking on BPM on the bottom menu on the right. Default is 120. Now go to the very top menu again and select Options. Go a little bit more than halfway down and click on Metronome slash Pre-Roll Settings. I like to get counted in before recording starts, so I have these options enabled. Enable metronome, run metronome during recording, count in before recording, count in measures, two, start count in at start of measure. Then I set primary beat volume and secondary beat gain as close as I could to zero dB. I left everything else as is. So that should give me a two measure count in before recording starts, and then hopefully the metronome volume will be loud enough because the default value is too quiet. Now press the red button right above the master section to start the recording process. Press the button with the light gray square to stop the recording process. A pop-up box asks you what you want to do. Save, rename, delete selected, or delete all. Choose save all. Now press the first button in the middle on the very left to send the cursor back to the start of your recording and press the silver button to play your new track. All right, congratulations on recording the first track of your new masterpiece. Make sure to save your project by clicking on File on the very top menu, then clicking on Save Project. Give it a name and click on Save. Now you can either re-listen, or add more tracks, or close Reaper and come back to it later. Your recording will be there for you. 
and search here on YouTube for Reaper videos to get you up and running smoothly on your recording projects. Let me know if you find any that you think are really good. All right, I put together a demo song using Reaper. Let's see how it sounds. So that was a look at how to use your audio interface to record from the Tone Master Pro into your digital audio workstation or DAW. And in this case, it was Reaper. Let me know how Reaper worked out for you or if you have any other questions about the Tone Master Pro. Next Wednesday, we'll be looking at using USB for recording with the Tone Master Pro as well as reamping. Now, you don't want to miss that. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. All right, guys, have a great weekend, and I'll be talking with you again next week.